Hi, my name is Kevin Tedonio from TryAndCatchMe.com and today I want to talk to you about a subject that's very close to my heart which is getting more power and more comfort on your bike without any additional effort. Um, today's subject is going to be talking about the shoe, the cycling shoe, uh, cycling cleats, and the midfoot position. Now tradition, for whatever reason, uh, in cycling says that the cleat shoe interface has to be up in the forefoot of your shoe. If you look at probably 99% of the, the riders in the Peloton in Europe or any of the shoe manufacturers from CD Specialized, Lake, or any shoe manufacturer for that matter, almost all of them, except, aside from custom manufacturers, mount their cleat uh, interface up in the forefoot of the shoe. Now, my question for you is why? Why mount your pedal shoe cleat interface up in the forefoot of the shoe? Um, and that's the question I want to ask you today uh, as part of this, this subject, um, moving backwards, uh, the midfoot uh, drill position. Now, I initially heard of this uh, position from a guy named Joe Friel in Scottsdale, Arizona, who on his website posted that he was able to achieve 10% greater power with same heart rate by simply moving his, his uh, cleat from the forefoot to the exact midfoot of his shoe. Now, when I saw 10%, um, those are the kind of uh, percentages that you can, can't get uh, throughout training this season. Um, so 10% uh, sounded very interesting. He also mentioned it was more comfortable. So I was instant, instantly very attracted to that. So what I have here is I have four shoes with uh, some being a little bit more moderate and something you might be more used to seeing to pretty extreme custom drilled shoes. And uh, before I get, begin, I want to have just a quick disclaimer that I'm not an engineer. I'm not a biomechanics expert. Uh, but I am a professional triathlete, and I pretty, pretty much do this for a living, and I spend a lot of time on my bike. So I know a thing or two about shoes, comfort, power, and here we go. So first I have a pair of 2012 CD T3 triathlon shoes with a regular nice solid carbon sole. Now for 2012, CD has a new op op offering um, with a 4-bolt speed play specific shoe that allows for 6 millimeters of more rearward movement than they normally have in their shoes. Now six millimeters is more than they had before, uh, but still when you think about six millimeters of rearward movement versus the whole midsole of your shoe, six millimeters really doesn't offer a whole lot. So while it's a nice try from CD, and this is a hell of a nice shoe, and if you're a speed play user and really like the forefoot uh, mount, I recommend these shoes. However, myself, having tried midsole, I can't go back, so this CD is gonna have to sit over here. Uh, next is I have a, a pair of specialized S-Work shoes. Um, these are off the shelf, uh, no modifications really to these shoes. But what you will see is that these shoes have a three-hole standard drill. And there's a new option. Uh, it's actually not too new. It's a couple of years old. Is Speed Play offers a rearward plate here that allows you to move the cleat of the Speed Play. If you're a Speed Play user, allows you to move that back about a centimeter and a half, which is about nine millimeters more than you get from the CDs I just showed you. Now, this is nice, it's stock, you can go to your local bike store and pick up this hardware, however, it adds a little bit of stack height, as you can see, and a centimeter and a half, when you look at the grand scheme of things, a centimeter and a half really isn't a whole lot. So, if you wanna go midsole, you either gotta go custom and spend about $1,000 with a company like D2, or you can do what I did, which is go in the closet, find an old pair of shoes and get your drill out and start having some fun. So another disclaimer, when you start talking about drilling carbon, like I did in my kitchen, uh, I'm not an engineer and I want to make sure that you understand that <laughs> you might be assuming some risk when you're doing this. However, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> so here's a pair of CD Ergo 2s. Now you might be looking at this and saying, hey, these are some really nice shoes this guy has on the table and he's talking about drilling them. Um, like I said, I have a lot of shoes, so what the heck, might as well try drilling them. In the grand scheme of things, if you're looking for 10% more power, what's an old pair of shoes? So I think once you, once you kind of drill your shoes, you're kind of making the full commitment that these shoes uh, are gonna be voiding the warranty for sure. Right, CD? You're gonna be avoiding the warranty and you might risk um, not being able to use those shoes again. So make sure you're using not your best pair of cycling shoes. Make sure you're using a pair of shoes that you're willing to throw in the garbage can to have, should things not work. So this is a pair of CD Ergo 2s like I mentioned. And what I did is I, I, I drilled a standard three-hole drilling on this CD carbon shoe. 
Now, whatever shoes you're going to be drilling, make sure it has a nice solid carbon sole. In the case of CD, I think they make the most solid carbon soles on the market, uh, bare none. Now, it might not be the lightest sole, but they are extremely stiff, and I think they hold up the best from what I've seen uh, with midsole drill shoes. So, in the case of this, um, this shoe here, I drilled about an inch and three quarters back from the standard three hole, uh, another three hole just below it, and I actually mounted the speed play adapter plate with some shimming to get a nice flat interface on the pedal. Now what this allowed me to do was use a standard speed play um, cleat, which is nice because I like speed play, and also allows me to manipulate the, the actual cleat position if I want to go a bit more forward or backwards. So it allowed me to kind of gradually move into the midfoot position. However, once I did try midfoot, I had a hard time ever trying to move that cleat back. In fact, I had a hard time going back to any standard shoes with a forefoot position. Now, why do I like the midsole position so much? Well, the way I try to think of it is it's really similar to a diesel engine versus a high octane racing engine. Um, if you're a crit specialist, if you were a climber or a weekend group rider that really wants to make that group, make that selection and jump onto a wheel with all the power you got, the midsole position might not be for you because essentially what the midfoot position does is it takes the lower half of the leg out of the pedaling equation. So if you notice, most people with the pedal with a midsole position, if you've ever seen it, uh, it removes a lot of the ankling um, out of the tibialis, tibialis anterior and the calf muscles. So you're using pretty much just your prime movers, your quadriceps, your hamstrings, and your glutes. It allows you to have this really solid locked-in feeling. That's the best way I can describe it when I clipped in for the first time with a midsole position was that I felt locked in. Um, I didn't really have to think too much about pedaling. It was just up, down. Like thought my legs felt like pistons. Uh, didn't really feel like I was pedaling circles. It just felt like I was in a stairmaster just mashing away. Now on the power meter, I did notice a, an increase in power anecdotally. I didn't do a whole lot of scientific studies here, but from my personal uh, experience, I noticed that I have, I'm able to go harder, longer before I, I have to, to really back off the power. So for those people competing in half Ironman distances and longer, Say for Ironman, I think this is really ideal because three, four, five hours into a ride, you still feel like you can really lay down the power with your glutes, your quads, and your hamstrings. Whereas with the, the forefoot options, where you're using your calves, I feel like those smaller secondary movers really start to break down before your quads, glutes, and hamstrings. So also, you get the effect of running off the bike. You might experience some gains there, as I sure have. And I'm really excited to start using this in 2012 because... I've really been using this since uh, Ironman Arizona, and I feel like this is really going to give me a big advantage in 2012. So this is the CD Ergo 2 um, with, a uh, like I said, a three-hole drill for speed play. I also drilled a pair of CD, uh, older CD T2 triathlon shoes. Again, same great carbon sole, and I actually mounted something a little bit more simple here, which is just an SPD um, style pedal, and this is something you'll see on Joe Friel's blog. Um, that he was a big proponent of because a lot of shoes, if you notice, don't really have a flat surface once you get behind the traditional mounting surface. So having that SPD kind of takes that and kind of gives you a little bit of a fudge factor there for your position. Um, one thing that is nice about the SPD is it allows you to have a little bit of lateral adjustment. So if you're finicky about your, your stance width or Q factor, you're able to kind of move that cleat sideways and laterally. One word of caution here is make sure uh, that you take into account your whole pedal cycle here and what I mean by that is that when you're pedaling, um, try to uh, envision where your, your crank arm is going to be because if you mount this uh, too far laterally, uh, your stance width is really going to come in and the inside of your shoe is going to rub on your crank arm. So make sure you have a little bit of a uh, lateral adjustment or if you really uh, just be careful of really where you drill your, uh, your cleat. Um, so this is the CD, Ergo, uh, CD uh, T2. Um, and one of the things I want to show you just real quick is just the inside of this shoe um, just to show you a little bit what's going on here. So the first step is really measuring your shoe, finding the center of your shoe. Once you find that, you're going to drill the pattern for the, 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 the cleat you're going to be installing. In this case, this is an SPD with two, two uh, bolts about a centimeter and a half apart. And so I really carefully, carefully drilled that carbon. Um, and I try to make the holes a little bit smaller than the actual bolts just to kind of drill like almost like a pilot hole and then be able to widen that out with a Dremel drill to make those holes as precise as possible because you really want a snug, nice fit. Uh, once you drill the holes, 
um, and they're wide enough for the bolts. Um, you, now, when you're, when you're drilling, you don't necessarily have to use metric. You can go to your hardware store. Um, you can use any size bolts you really want. However, in this case, I used metric, uh, just an M5 standard uh, M5 uh, bolt. And I use T-nuts, uh, which in this, if you go in metric, one of the nice things is, is you can use some standard T-nuts that are actually found in shoes. And your, bike, your local bike store might actually have these, or you can order them online. Uh, they're not too hard to find. So if you're going to go with just a standard um, shoe T-nut, you can actually put these in the shoe. Uh, you're going to want to glue this with a really solid, slow set epoxy. Don't use some of that five-minute five quick-dry Gorilla Glue. You want something that's going to be really, really solid when you're laying down the watts, jumping on a saddle. You want something that's going to be really rock solid. So epoxy this in your shoe. Make sure it's a good 24-hour epoxy. Um, then you can go ahead and install your, your cleat on your shoe. And um, lastly, you're going to need some bolts. Um, so I was able to go to the hardware store in my case and uh, just get some of these 16 millimeter M5 bolts, install them into the shoe. Once you're done, rock and roll. Uh, make sure you do some testing, preferably on a trainer before you head outdoors. Um, one word of caution, like I said, you're gonna notice a couple of things right away. First, you're gonna really feel locked in. You're gonna feel like your legs are pistons. You're gonna notice a little bit of a funny feeling when you jump out of the saddle. You're not gonna have that ankling that you're used to. However, specifically once you get into your longer rides, you're gonna, I think you're gonna notice a little bit more power and running off the, bi the bike, you should feel a little bit more fresh. Um, last word of caution, uh, toe overlap. If you have big feet like me, I got some big boat feet, size 13. Um, so once you go midsole, your foot's going forward um, versus the bottom bracket. So your front wheel, there might be a little bit of a clearance issue. So make sure you try going around corners a little bit more gingerly uh, than you normally would once you try the shoe. So. That's the midsole position, a little bit of my experience and some examples here. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at kevintodonio at gmail.com or directly on my website, tryandcatchme.com. Thanks a lot.